Hello, welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or onespotmedia.com. We're also live on Music99 and gojamaica.com. If you have any questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at Television Jam. I am Pierce Lawrence. School's not out community. Come here, come here, sit tight. And come with me, let's shed some light. I'll be teaching this lesson with all my might as we talk about genetics, the thing that is out of sight. Now deep inside the nucleus, can I tell? is a tiny book of recipe for controlling the cell. It's your DNA and on its resume is knowing how to build a body in every possible way. But how does the body really know how to make protein? It's by making and using those genetic codes that we call our genes. Like a tiny book of recipe made just for you. All buried in the sequence of genetic glue, there's an A and a T, a C and a G, all adding up to make you and me. We get looks from our mom and some from our dad. We get our traits from them even if it makes us sad. Like Mama Peggy, who's got that world-renowned nose, the one that makes everybody run when it blows. And Daddy Pete, who always looks very neat, until his knee bulges out when he takes a seat. And as for me, it's in my pedigree. My eyes, my ears, and my height is from the gene in my family tree. So like a tiny book of recipe made just for you, all buried in the sequence of genetic glue, there's an A and a T, a C and a G, all adding up to make you and me. We get 23 chromosomes from our mom and 23 chromosomes from our dad. That's 46 chromosomes when we add. And each chromosome is quite unique, passing on from generation to generation like it's an antique. Alleles are what we call different kinds of gene, like how there's an allele for eyes being brown or green. And if your hair is kinky or wavy still, no worry yourself, man, it's the gene that gives it that type of skill. And remember, if the gene is dominant or recessive, even better, it makes you still impressive. So like a tiny book of recipe made just for you, or buried in the sequence of genetic glue, there's an A and a T, a C and a G, all adding up to make you and me. All right, excellent. So students, last week we were, well last time we were able to look on genetics and we were able to isolate some key terms that we got from the poem a while ago. Now for today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is building on that concept as we seek to predict results involving one pair of alleles and we also will include heterozygous, homozygous dominant and recessive conditions. We're also going to introduce a new concept in that we're going to be describing mechanisms of sex determination and inheritance of sex-linked diseases in humans. Fun fact. Now, did you know that there are cases within which there are more than three alleles for the same gene? Hmm. This is what we refer to as multiple allele expression. But it is very imperative for us to remember that even though there might be more than two or three alleles, we can only have two at any given time. We get one from our mom and one from our dad. Question. Can you think of an example of this that was illustrated in our last lesson? Think about it. If you said blood group, yes, someone has been revising. Remember for blood group, there are three possible alleles that we can have. You have A, also represented as IA. You have B, also represented as IB. And you have O, also represented as IO. Now from our combination, remember, if someone has A and A, it gives us the genotype AA, and what does the child have? Blood type A. If the child gets A and the O, remember A and B alleles are more dominant than the O, so in this case, the genotype is OAO, and what is the blood type? Still A, because A is more dominant. 
Same principle with B. If we have two B alleles, genotype is BB and the blood type is type B. And if we have B and O, similar concept, we have genotype BO and the blood type is type B. But what happens when we have O and O? That's two recessive alleles. And in this case, the child would have blood type O. And what if the child has A and B? A and B share what we call co-dominance. So we are going to get both of these being expressed. So the genotype is AB. And what do we have? A blood type AB. Excellent. So we're going to apply these concept, concepts now to use them to, to answer a few key questions that we could see on our exam paper. And even though the exam might be multiple choice, it's imperative that we know how to answer structured questions because it calls for certain levels of application same way. So this first question says, a person with genotype IA, IB, which means that they have blood type AB, is crossed with a person who has the genotype IA, IA. What is a genotypic and phenotypic ratio of the offspring and remember phenotype is what we can see so let's look at our cross we're going to assume that the father is the one that has ia ib and remember we split up this genetics or these this gene to give us our two alleles ia and ib respectively and if we say that the mother is ia and ia we're going to split those up to get our two alleles Let's look at the animation that's going to show us our possible combinations. We could have the father donating this allele, IA, and the mother could give us another IA. That's our first possible combination. We could have the father giving IB and the mother giving IA. That's our second possible combination. What else do we have? We have the father giving another IA and the mother also have a second IA that she could give. So that's a third combination and fourth we have the father given ib and the mother given another ia which gives us our fourth combination now when we isolate the genotypes and the phenotypes let's see what we have you notice in the diagram we have two ias ia we're seeing both of them so in this case we have two of that and what is the phenotype we said when you have two IAs or two AA alleles, we have blood type A. What happens when we have IA, IB? We're seeing two of them. So in this case, it would give us 50% because two out of four times 100 is 50%. 50% chance that our probability could give us a child that has blood type AB. Let's look at our next example. A person with the blood type AB is crossed with a person with blood type O. So in this case, the question is giving us the phenotypes and we're expected to deduce the genotypes. So what is the genetic or the genotypic ratio and the phenotypic ratio of the offspring? And we're expected to use our Punnett square as per usual to show our answer. We're assuming in this case that the father could be IA, IB, and if the mother has blood type O, it means that she has both recessive alleles. So she has two O's. So when we do our possible combinations, the father has a A that could combine with the mother's O first. Then the second, the father has a B that could combine with the mother's O. Then the father could have a A. The mother has a second O that could probably be the allele there. And the fourth combination, the father has a B and the mother donating another O. So let's look at our genotypes and our phenotypic ratio. Notice in the first square and the third square, we have two IA, IO. So in this case, our phenotypic ratio, again, like the first example, we could have 50% blood type A. Another possibility, we have IB, IO, and we're seeing we have two of them being circled. So in this case, these two parents could give us a child that has blood type B. So notice though, that none of the children would end up having 
uh, blood type like their parents if this was a specific genetic makeup of the parents. Let's look at example three. A man with type A blood and a woman with type B blood has an offspring with type O. But the father claims that the child is not his. Or in the Jamaican saying, we say the father claims that the child is a jacket. So we're going to use a Punnett square to refute this. How could we do this? Let's see. Remember that for blood type A, there are two possible combinations that we could have. Remember the term multiple allele expression? So the father could have IA or the father IA, IA, or the father could have IA, IO. And for the mother, she has B blood type, which means that she has IB, IB, or she could have IB, IO. Now, we know that in the first scenario, if both of the parents have an homozygous dominant gene for each of the alleles, then it's probably a possibility that the child is not is. But the question asks us to show how we could refute this concept. So let's see what would happen if the father has IA, IO, which is the same thing as type A blood, and the mother has IB, IO, which is the same thing as type B blood. Let's look at our cross. In our first square, what do we have? The father giving an IA and the mother is giving an IB. Then in the second square, we have the father giving an IO and the mother is giving an IB. In the third square, what do we have? The father is giving IA and the mother is giving another IO. And then in the fourth square, the father gives an IO whilst the mother gives an IO. Like the great scientists, we could say, Eureka, we have solved it. So we see one possibility in this case, where if this was a specific gen genetic makeup of this couple, then what could we have? We could have one IAIB. We could have one IBIO. We could have one IAIO. And we could also have what? The, the solve, um, the, the cracker for the case, IOIO. And this is what we are very interested in today. So this couple could have a 25% chance of having a child that has blood type AB, a 25% chance of them having a blood type B, 25% chance that the child could have blood type A, and another 25% chance that what? The child has blood type O, right? So in this case, the child could have any of the four possible blood types if this is the possible combination from our parents. And so we could refute the claim that the child is not a jacket and he belongs to the father. Now we're moving on to sex-linked inheritance. Now, a common question that a lot of pregnant women in our society are faced during their, their period of gestation is that person always asks them, are you going to have a boy or are you going to have a girl? That's one of the most common questions that are asked within the first few trimesters of pregnancy. But how do we determine whether or not the child is boy or girl, male or female? Now, in humans and other mammals, Biological sex is determined by a pair of sex chromosomes. And these chromosomes are our X and Y chromosome, respectively. All other chromosomes in the body are referred to as acrosome, and the X and the Y are the only two that we refer to as sex chromosomes. So please note that going forward. So the now question. How is the offspring gender determined? Let's look at our first illustration. If the child has a pair of X chromosomes, so we have two, what is going to be the gender? In this case, the offspring is going to be female. However, if the child has an X and a Y chromosome, in this case, the offspring or the child is going to be a male offspring. Now it's very imperative and important for us to note that there are two sex chromosomes. We said X and Y. Remember from the poem, we get 23 from our dad, 23 from our mom, 46 chromosomes when we add. All right, good. So unlike the other 42 
are 22 pairs. And for the persons who are trying to, to do the match, remember you have a pair of socks, it's two socks. So if we say we have 22 pairs of acrosome or body chromosomes, it means that we have 22 times two, which is 44. So what accounts for the additional two chromosomes is our sex chromosomes. Now for the persons who can see the image, you will notice that the X chromosome is slightly larger than the Y chromosome and this is how it is natural in nature. The Y chromosome is very shorter relative to the X chromosome. And because of this, you'll find that there are certain genes that are carried only on the X chromosome and not on the Y chromosome because of course, you'll have parts that are missing. Because of this concept also, we will say that the sex chromosome X and Y are not truly homologous because they're not the same thing. They're similar, but not, not the same. So fun fact, let's get another one. There are several uh, misconceptions that persons have in regards to sex determination. So like take for example, Paul here. Paul says, my grandfather, and my father both had only sons. It means that when I have children, I should have only boys, I should have only sons, so I shouldn't be getting any girls. But what we're going to do today is show you why this is actually a myth, and it's not true based on genetics. So we have a bigger circle crossing that out, it is not true. How? Let's look at the combination. So unlike before when we were putting our alleles on our Punnett square, in these sex-linked inheritance, what we're going to be showing is our X and our Y chromosomes, and specifically for the X chromosome, there are going to be specific genes that we're going to be adding to our X chromosome and investigating. So, what if the father gives an X chromosome and the mother gives her first chromosome in the first square? The child could be a female. Then, if the father gives a Y chromosome, and the mother gives another X chromosome, we could get a male. The father gives another X and the second X from the mother, we get another female. And then the father gives a Y and the mother gives another X and in this case, we could get another male. So in this case, we have two XY, two XX. So the possibility stands that every single time a couple procreates or have a child, it stands that it's a 50% chance that the child could be a male because it's two out of four. And it also could be a 50% chance that the child could be a female. So it's a 50-50 probability that the child could be male or female respectively. But how can we use the, these concepts to isolate certain sex-linked inheritance? And what are we talking about? For genes that are carried on the X chromosome, they are said to be sex, X linked, sorry, X linked genes. And X linked genes have a distinctive inheritance pattern because they present in a different um, frequency in females than males. Because of this, we are saying that they are more common in males, reason being that for the male, you only have one X chromosome so if you get a recessive or dominant, that's automatically what you're going to get. But for the female who has two X chromosomes, you, if you get a recessive on the other X chromosome, you could get a dominant. And so this specific in inheritance pattern will change for you relative to males. Let's look at our first example. Now, one of the most common example we have in humans is colorblindness. And you always hear persons say males are colorblind. We're going to see why. In humans, color blindness is due to the recessive allele, and we're using the letter B, and normal vision is due to the dominant allele, we're using capital letter B for normal. So normal vision is dominant over color blindness. Color blindness is a sex-linked trait carried on the X chromosome. The question is asked, what is the expected offspring between a normal male and a colorblind female. Both the genotypic and the phenotypic ratio is needed and we're going to be showing this using our Punnett square. So let's isolate what we have. So we said that the father is normal, which means that the father's X chromosome has the capital letter B. 
for the mother, she has the recessive traits and she is colorblind. So for both of her X chromosomes, there is two common Bs as seen in the example. So what could be the possibility? The father could give his dominant X gene or the X chromosome with the dominant B gene. The mother gives the X chromosome with the recessive X gene or the common letter. The father gives his Y and notice there's no letter attached to the Y because again, this is a sex linked inheritance that's only carried on the X. So the mother is going to give a X common B. Then the father gives again his dominant B that is carried on his X chromosome for the third square. The mother gives another possibility where she's giving an X and a common B and the father gives a Y and notice again, the mother is giving an X with a common B or the recessive trait. And you will also notice that in this example for the males, the XY, you notice that the X's were moving from the mother. So all males, your X chromosome specifically come from your mother. So let's see what we have for genotypes and phenotypes. We have an X capital B, an X common B, and we have two of them actually. So we have two X, capital B, common B, or we say, in this case, the phenotype, what we see would be an unaffected carrier female. And we say she's a carrier because she has a dominant gene for normal eyes, but at the same time, she has the recessive gene, the common B, which could, she could pass on to another offspring, which means that she's a carrier in this case. For the males, look at that. The males have, have bitten the dust. The male has an X, a common B, so the male's got both recessive genes from the parent. So if the mother was colorblind, automatically what it means is that the male children are going to be colorblind. So we have two of them and a 50% chance that the male, if you get a male, that the child will be colorblind as well. Let's look at the same example, but another part. So one B. So we're still using B, common B for the recessive allele. And we're still using capital B for the dominant allele for normal vision. Now, in this scenario, we have another couple and it's a normal male that is crossed with a female who is a carrier. So you are fine males and you decide to marry a woman who is carrying this gene. Let's see what's going to be the probability that the child could be colorblind. Let's look at our Punnett square. So the male again, normal. Notice on the X chromosome, dominant gene is there so it's a capital b and for the female on both of her x chromosome we have a capital b and on the second we have a common b which means that she has both normal vision gene or allele and she has the um, colorblind allele so for the male he could pass on his normal x chromosome and the female likewise passing on her normal x chromosome the male or the father is passing on his Y chromosome and the female passing on in the second square her XB normal chromosome. Let's look, it's changing up a bit now. For the female, he's passing on an X chromosome that is carrying the dominant gene. But for the female, we notice that she's carrying the X common B or the recessive for color blindness. For the male, again, Y. And we're not worried about Y because sex links are mostly X. And then for the female, she passed on the recessive gene. So look at it again, males. In this case, we get a normal female. So at X, two X chromosomes that have the dominant gene for normal vision. Then we have 25% there, normal female. Then what we could also have, a male that has a normal vision. So we have an X with both dominant. There we go. So 25% a normal male. Then... We have a female carrier this time. So both our X chromosomes are carrying a normal and one is carrying a recessive. So 25% carrier female that's unaffected by colored vision. And then in this case, we have a male who has sadly color blindness. All right, because he has the recessive gene on his X chromosome. Then our final scenario in this question. So C, it says, is it possible for a male to be a carrier for color blindness? Explain. Now, when we say that a male or someone is a carrier, 
Remember that we need to express the alleles or the genes in the heterozygous. So you must have a dominant or a capital letter, and we must have a recessive or a common letter. Now, in order for us to have that, for sex-linked inheritance, for unlike what we see in the females, they have two X chromosomes. So if one is carrying a dominant allele, as we see it with X capital B, the other could carry a recessive, which would be the X common B. So the females can be carriers. But can this be seen in males? We're saying no. That's our answer. It is not possible. Reason being, having these different mutations on the gene on the X chromosome is particularly problematic for males because unlike females that have two X chromosome, for the males you have only one which means that if you get a recessive gene or a recessive allele, there is nothing or no other X chromosome to counteract this to give you that carrier feature. And this is why in most cases, we find that for most sex-linked inheritance, they are more predominant in males than females. A few additional sex-linked diseases that we have existing in, uh, for humans. We have hemophilia, and this was a more prevalent within the royal couple. For those persons who are not familiar what, with what hemophilia is, this is a blood clotting disorder that does not facilitate your blood um, clotting easy. So if you were to get a cut, you, you bleed out just in split seconds. And even for females who on a regular um, basis, uh, upon puberty, you know, menstruation and pu um, periods is something that is seen. For females, that is something that could be detrimental for you because at no point are you able to stop bleeding. You have what is also called congenital night blindness. So this is the inability to see during the night. You have some high blood pressure genes. So say, for example, um, for in some males, your, your, your mother has suffered from high blood pressure and you also suffer from it. You also have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is a muscular degeneration disease. And the final one, which is fragile X syndrome, which is characterized by mental retardation. Now, we are going to take a quick break, and when we resume from a break, what we're going to be doing is focusing on some sample pass paper type questions. So remember that for CXC this year, they said that we're doing only multiple choice. So what we're going to be doing is isolating a few quick questions where we would apply the genetics concept to these questions so that we'll know if we were to see this, how could the questions present themselves? School's not out. We'll be right back when we will resume with these questions. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. 
Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon. Welcome back to Schools Not Out. We were discussing CSEC biology. And if you have any questions on what we have done so far, you can send them into our various platform and we will see if we can answer these in our final segment. Now, earlier, before we went on the break, we wrapped up co-dominance, made mention of multiple allele expression, and we delve into sex-linked inheritance. Now, it's very important because someone asked, in regards to night blindness, also for night blindness, it is something that is also caused by deficiency. But for congenital night blindness, which is occurring over time, so your diet is perfectly fine, but you recognize that at night the eyesight is going, that is something that could be sex linked. So let's look at our first past paper question. And we say that these are going to be our multiple choice items. So question one. Which of the following best describe the visible characteristics of living things? Is it A, genotype, B, phenotype, C, chromosome, or D, genotype? Think about it. Hmm. Remember we say that the gene is what makes you up. So that's inside. So we can't see our gene. Chromosome is also found inside the nucleus of the cells. We can't see that. Genotype, similar to gene. Again, that is our genetic makeup. So in this case, the answer is B, which is Phenotype. Phenotype is what is visible, what is expressed. So when I look at you, I'm seeing the phenotypic expressions of your genes. Let's look at question two. Which of the following is not inherited? We have A, iron deficiency anemia, B, skin color, C, sickle cell anemia, and D, gender. So let's see if we can do by way of elimination, which is what I expect everyone to practice for your assessments. You can eliminate the answers first and then it boils down to what is going to be your best answer. So gender, we said again, this is something that is determined by your genetics or X and our Y chromosome. Sickle cell anemia is also something that is also genetic. We looked at that in our previous lesson. Skin color also is genetics because of course our gene is what will will determine what melanin is going to be produced iron deficiency anemia however this is determined by your diet so it's not something that is determined by your genetics and it's not something that is inherited but it's all based on what you eat on a regular basis so our answer a iron deficiency anemia let's look at question three in guinea pigs Rough coat is dominant to smooth coat. It says if two heterozygous rough coat guinea pigs mate, what would they produce? All right, and for this one, we're going to take it to the board so that we can all see what it is that we're doing. So we're saying for guinea pigs, rough coat, which is R, is dominant to smooth. So this is for rough. And common R, we say this is smooth. And if we have two heterozygous, so a big R and a common R, let's do our Punnett square. On both sides, what could we have? We could have two, remember what we call this, homozygous dominant. We could have a big R and a small R. Same thing right here. What do we term this as? heterozygous and then we can have two small r's in this case let me move this over a little bit for us in this case we say this is homozygous recessive so we're getting one of each of the possible combinations so let's look at the answers a says rough coat only 
That's not true because we got a possibility where we have two common R's. We have, next one says, um, uh, some members of each type. Hmm, that sounds like it could be the answer. What about C? Smooth coat offsprings only. No, definitely not because we had, again, rough coats being produced. And it says an equal number of both types. That's not true because if we were to look back at our Punnett square here, what we notice is that we have three rough coats and one smooth coat. So in this case, we would get some members of each type, which means that our answer is B. Excellent. Let's look at question number four. A gene which codes for cattle is showing incomplete dominance. I remember for incomplete dominance, we say that for both genes, they come together and they present a new phenotype in the heterozygous. So a purebred cow with red coat mates with a purebred coat bull with white coat. All the offspring springs are ruined, which means that there is going to be a mixture of the two. What is going to be the possible combination of the genotype of the offsprings. So in this case, for our incomplete dominance, what we are going to see is that if both come together, we have both red and white being shown. So that only is present in which genotype or heterozygous, because in the heterozygous, we have a capital R, which would give red, and we have the common R, which would give white. Let's look at question number five. Which of the following describes the chromosome present in, present in the ordinary cells of a human female? Let's see what we can eliminate. Remember the poem. We get 23 chromosomes from our mom, 23 chromosomes from our dad, and that's 46 chromosomes when we add. So we need to have 46 chromosomes in total. So let's look. A says 22 plus X. Hmm. That's 22 plus 1, so that's 23. And how many are we supposed to have? 46, so that's definitely not the answer. B says 22 plus X and X. 22, and there's 2X, so that gives us 24. We're still short by a lot, so that's definitely not the answer. What about C? C says 22 pairs plus X. Hmm, that seems close, but let's see. Let's do the math. 22 times 2, that's 44 plus 1x chromosome, that's 45, we're still short 1, which means that in the normal female, you have 22 pairs plus 2x chromosomes. Let's do our final one. In chickens, black and white feathers are evenly distributed about the body. And if the breeder crosses chickens and find that there are pure white, pure black, and eminent among the offspring, what would be the ratio of black, white, and erminate? And in this case, you know, when we are mixing two heterozygous, we get one to two to one. And the two is usually symbolic of our heterozygous. And in this case, erminate is our heterozygous. So they are trying to trick us. So the ideal answer would be one to one to one. Notice says, respectively, one black, one white, and the erminate, which is heterozygous, is going to be our two. We have time for one last one. Billy, uh, the son of Paul and Judith, may have inherited red-green colorblindness gene from the parents. Neither Paul nor Judith is colorblind, and if N represents a normal gene, what is the genotype of the parent? So we're applying what we learned today with sex-linked inheritance. So let's see what we can eliminate. In the first example, let's see, let's start from the bottom. In B, it says Paul is X, N, Y. That would mean that Paul is normal, but for Judith, we see Judith has X and the two recessive genes, which means that she's colorblind. Uh, we're noticing for anything that has Judith have two N, so C is also being eliminated. And then for B, would eliminate B because Paul has the recessive gene, which means in this case, Paul is also colorblind, but based on the scenario, we know that both parents should be normal. So our answer is... X, N, Y, which is Paul, with a capital N. And for Judith, she has the heterozygous, which she has an X with a capital N and an X with a common Y. 
So students, that's all for today for CSET Biology. And we hope you were able to grasp the points that we were discussing today. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 4 p.m. and in the Schools Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. It will also be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I'm Pierce Lawrence. Remember, stay safe, study, and wash your hands. All the best.